That's right. The Suncoast had its very own TV station, meaning no more fuzzy programs from Tampa. Now, a clear new signal was beaming through the airwaves. It was Channel 40 on the UHF dial, and it was the beginning of what is now ABC7. From WXLT to WWSB to ABC7. Through the years. A look at the 1970s. WXLT TV 40 signed on for the first time in October 1971. The station was started by Robert Nelson, who owned two radio stations in the area. We were able to raise the capital and get the local support, and uh, we went ahead. And the total staff, when we went on the air with uh, Channel 40 uh, from Clark Road, uh, Lawton Drive, was 13 stalwart ambitious, hard-working young men and women. Before it was ABC7 or WWSB, it was WXLT. Nelson came up with the call letters. Maybe few people realize that WXL is W40. And that was kind of a, a brainstorm that came to me in, one night as I slept. WXLT signed on the air at 10 a.m. on weekdays, 8 a.m. on Saturday, and 7 a.m. on Sunday, signing off at 1 a.m. The news was broadcast at 6 and 11, and Bob Keene was the first anchor. He stood at a podium and read the news under the very hot studio lights for the salary of $5 a newscast. And originally, we had no teleprompters. It was a read and look up, read and look up situation. Good evening. I'm Bob Keene, and here's the news. And the early days of news gathering were much different. A station manager gave all the salesmen and everybody on staff a Polaroid camera, black and white Polaroid, told us to keep our eyes open for news stories, accidents, whatever. We would tape it up on a board in sequence, and the camera would pan it as we read the story. Alan Everhart was the first weatherman, and Andrea Kirby was the first female local TV sports anchor in the state of Florida. We hired her. Our, our opening was, was for weather and possibly other news assignments. Yeah. And she, she didn't like doing weather. And when she saw that there was an opportunity in sports, I said, gung-ho. She would be followed by Ron Jackson. Meantime, Steve Newman was the station multitasker. My job, I was a booth announcer. I was behind the scenes switching the commercial breaks into the programming. Uh, they let me be promotions manager, uh, a sweeper of the studio at night, and after our first weatherman finally left, uh, they convinced me to become the station's second weatherman. Here's a glimpse of how his weather forecast looked in the 1970s. So tomorrow night, I place this cold front extending from just about, at uh, this time, 76 down in New Orleans, 69 at Dallas and Fort Worth, 51 degrees. Winds are out of the northwest, 15 to 20 miles per hour. And we've had 51 one hundredths of an inch of rainfall outside of our studio. Newman was one of the first to do weather in the weather, even climbing the tower at the station one afternoon. It's been quite mild, very pleasant weather, with a little bit of gusty winds almost blown off a couple of times. Also hired in the 1970s was Wendy Ross. I was still at MCC. They had a job opening here at the station. I came down and applied for it. And I just kept calling and calling and calling. And I made certain that they didn't forget my name. And I was with Bob Keene and I was with Ron Jackson. And we only had a 6 o'clock and an 11 o'clock news. There were no noon shows. There was no early morning. It was just the 6 and the 11. And we only worked Monday through Friday. Commercials and station promos certainly look different in those days. I'm Donna Valentine for Intercity National Bank. Say, have you heard about the new 42-month new car loans at Intercity National Bank? We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. From the staff and management of Channel 40, WXL TTV, we wish you a beautiful holiday season. The station carried telethons and some local programs, and then Nelson convinced the ABC network to add WXLT since the Tampa affiliate signal was too weak to reach parts of Sarasota County. The station has several local programs, including Black Almanac, hosted by Ed James. James is now in his 39th year, making him the senior member of the staff. And my thought was, we're going to give people a chance to be on TV who would not normally be on TV with things that were important to them. 
When it came to the news in the 1970s, a tragic incident at WXLT was actually one of the biggest stories. One of our on-the-air anchor people in the morning decided she would like to commit suicide right on the air, which she proceeded to do. Uh, her name was Chris Chubbick, and it became a national news story uh, covered by just about everybody. Nelson's vision was to give young broadcasters a chance to start at WXLT and then move on to bigger markets. And that vision has come true. Andrea Kirby went on to Baltimore and then ABC. Steve Newman did weather in Chicago and San Francisco. Craig Sager is now at TBS. Now, 40 years later, when Robert Nelson watches ABC7, he feels very good about what he started. In a phrase, it's, it's my baby no matter what it says on the FCC license. Yes, it's, it's, it's a natural pride that, uh, that I have, and it uh, may be deeper than most people because it goes back to the first day when 13 of us uh, walked through the doors and pledged our lives and our spirit to uh, success.